arms. <sighs> Look what I found today. I've, I've picked this great sweater up from, uh, from, from the city today. Uh, it's, it's the designer stuff. Good, isn't it? Is, is that a sweater? It looks like a jumper from here. Very good. See what we did there? See, we, you could put water between us, but you can't, you can't stop us from mixing and muddling around our languages. No, we've just been shooting this afternoon uh, in Clavia Studio 3. We've been shooting a fantastic new course right here on Academy. Uh, so if it's not up now, it'll be up within the next hour or so, or a couple of hours. It'll be there, um, all about ASICs and FPGA chips. You'll love it. So I've come straight from there, straight to here, because I'm just that kind of guy, JK. Just that kind of guy. What do you think to that? And I think it's great. Shall we do some news? Wait. Beat me to it, didn't you? You beat me to it. <laughs> what? Oh, that's a dog's head. I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, not, not responsible is that, for that. Is bit. that an orangutan watching TV? I can't see. Yeah. I see that's a dog's yeah. ear, not an orangutan's arm. It's, 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 okay. a, it's no an problem. orangutan. No problem. You can't teach an old dog new tricks, as they say. Well, you can because this first piece is really it's a quick lesson on DVLED. Um, it talks about. Uh, you know, it gives you some examples of how we've been used to things like um, pitch, pitch, pixel pitch, forgive me, there's a lot of content here, pixel pitch viewing distance, resolutions, for example, normally with flat panel displays and projectors, the image size can vary, while well, the resolution remains constant, but that's not the same with direct view LED. Things change, uh, the individual LEDs or pixels on the surface of the module, um, they're a fixed size, so as the, the size of it changes, so does the resolution. Am I getting, have I, did I get this right? I think I've, You've got I've it been right. to school you know, if I, if this I go to, afternoon. If I, go, if I go to the electronic store and I say I want a 4K TV, that's roughly about 4,000 pixels wide, 2,000 pixels tall, yeah. and I can get that as 30 inches or 50 inches or 75 inches or 80 inches. You know, the pixels get bigger and smaller to fit the 8 million pixels on a single display, right? With, with, with direct view LED, what we're talking about is the sort of, the pixel itself is a defined size, right? And you'll see that in the pitch, right? We'll say, oh, I have a 2.5 millimeter pitch. I have a one millimeter pitch. That's, that's basically how big are the pixels. Um, and so if you have one millimeter pitch and you want a 4,000 pixel wide display, guess what? It's going to be 4,000 millimeters wide. That's it. Full stop. If you want more resolution, you get a bigger display. You want less resolution, you get a smaller display. Now, of course, if you need to change size while keeping your resolution, well, then you look at different pitch displays. Maybe you get a 1.25 millimeter. Maybe you get a 0.75 millimeter, uh, etc. But it becomes one more item to, to, to be flexible about. And you have to think about this when you're thinking about your viewing distance, right? Are you building something that's going to go on the wall at a retail center where somebody might be 10 feet away looking at this thing? You'll need a very fine pitch so that the pixels aren't too large, so that they don't get, you don't see that pixelated image, right? Meanwhile, if you're building a stadium display and it's 90 meters wide and the nearest viewer is 200 meters away, suddenly you can use a much larger pitch, much larger pixels uh, to give you that great size of display and you don't have to worry about it being pixelated because the viewer is so far away. Thank goodness this is all being recorded so you can go back over the archive, get your pen and paper out and go back and make some notes. Because <laughs> somebody just pulled the ripcord on the back of you there, Justin, which is fab. We love it when you do that. <laughs> Whoa. It's a good <laughs> it's a good article. And and there's some other there's other considerations you know, to do with the pricing and cost considerations, you know. Uh, remembering that as the pitch pi pixel pitch decreases the equipment cost increases or anyway take a look at the article because it's fascinating and it gives you a really good very quick as you've just seen the article plus Justin gives you an amazing very quick course um, on direct view LED we may even do a course like this soon what do you reckon that might not be a bad idea why not why not I and I then, apologize for my, my strange accent to you, Matt. I'll try and speak more slowly. No, not at all. No, Listen, I'm in the minority here. It's fine. You do, it's, it's great. <laughs> News article number two, a world first. We should have had a, should have had a, a sting there, maybe, Paul? Oh, for a world where's the world first, first sting, Where's Paul? the world first sting? Come on. Uh, world first. Wouldn't it be great if suddenly a world first sting popped up there? That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? World first. Moss, you thought Moss was bad, right? Wrong. Moss is not. Bad, is it, Justin? 
it can be useful, it turns out. These guys, uh, what's their name? Green City Solutions. That's it. Have developed the City Breeze, and you see kind of a picture of it there. This is a this is a, an out-of-home signage, digital signage display to be installed in the train station, you know, in the downtown corridor, the taxi stand, etc. Give people information. But built into this thing is some sort of moss, literally, like... Is that a Clever plant moss. or is that like a fungus? Well, Whatever moss yeah. is. So this living, this living thing that cleans and cools the air around it. So, so now the city council gets to decide, uh, oh, well, we want to put in some signage. We want to inform our citizens about when the next bus is going to arrive. And we can clean and cool the air at the same time. Uh, as they say in their, in their, I don't want to be cynical here, but as they say in their amazing marketing, like, how, why would you not? You know, if you're going to put in digital signage, why would you not put in digital signage that cleans and cools the air around it? Why not? Um, and it, it, it's also really helping to tackle the, pro the problems that are currently all over the world, really, of air pollution and rising mm -hmm. urban temperatures. So, you know, there's a real green pitch to this. Crikey, you can come over to our, any, any garden in the UK uh, and take as much moss as you like and nobody's going to complain. Um, but, but yeah, it's, 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 it's really having a, it's going to, it's, it's designed to have a massive impact uh, on on uh, on air pollution, uh, it's a bit of an in innovation really in, in clean air generation. They claim, they claim that, that the this unit here has the capacity to filter, and I am going to to read this, fourteen hundred cubic meters of air an hour, which is pretty impressive. And you think they're going to increase this now and have lots and lots of them all over the place, one hundred and fifty of them going out this this year apparently. It's amazing. Check it out. You've got an interview to do, I'm going to leave you to it, uh, and I'll guess back again. So have fun, I'll see you in a bit.